Hello and welcome to Real Reviews. I'm your host, Phil James. And in studio producing with me is Michael Webster. Hey Phil, how are you doing? I'm doing well. And how are you? Yeah, not too bad. What are we talking about today? So today we're going to be talking about Icarus. This is a documentary that's exclusive to Netflix. The premise of the documentary is it's uh, directed by a man named Brian Fogel. Mm-hmm. Now, Brian is somebody who is an amateur cyclist in his previous years as well. Okay. He's a big fan of Lance Armstrong. Mm. Of course, a few years ago, Lance uh, finally admitted that he'd been doping all these years in his competitions. Mm. And despite the fact that he'd had numerous tests, he'd managed to avoid detection. Right. So Brian sets out to see whether, one, he can outperform himself by competing in a... Uh, amateur competition that he's previously competed in while doping yeah whilst doping okay and two to see whether he could possibly get tested and obviously come back positive uh, come back negative and, flying uh, colors flying colors yeah. everything's good he's clean um so to assist him with this he gets in touch with a russian doping expert and doping expert who mm-hmm. leads a team in russia scientist sort of thing yeah, he's a scientist, okay. yeah, um, works for WADA, I believe, the World Anti-Doping Agency based in Russia. Okay. Uh, as Brian... So he goes to an anti-doping company to learn how to... Yeah. <laughs> it's ironic, dude. Yeah, you? the irony. <laughs> and uh, whilst Brian's obviously in touch with this Russian scientist, he actually stumbles on a much bigger conspiracy okay. uh, about the Russian government and how they've been effectively cheating the Olympics for years. Mm. And they've had a uh, state-sponsored doping program for decades, going back that's uh, big. as far as the 60s, yeah. For six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, um, that's, that's very big. Yeah. Um, and this is a it's a Netflix documentary, isn't it? And we can watch that on Netflix, right? Yeah, now. it's it's. I believe it's only available exclusively on Netflix, so mm. you do have to be an ex, ex, uh, Netflix member to be able to watch it. Mm. But I assure you, it's well worth watching. Like any great documentary, it leaves you with questions mm. asking of the audience. Uh, one of the one of the questions that asked you is it calls into question the legitimacy of the Olympic Games. Mm-hmm. There's obviously this whole uh, ethos around the Olympics that it's fair play and and shake hands and everyone competes cleanly and yeah, okay, maybe there's one or two uh, bad apples, yeah. but for the most part, everyone's doing it for the good of the sport and yeah, actually... Represent the country. Yeah, represent the country. Mm. Um, but if you really... I mean, this scandal obviously shows that that's not the case and who else is potentially doping country-wise? Yeah, I mean, well, who, who else? Who, who do you think? <laughs> well, I've got a few ideas. I mean, yeah. particularly more countries that are still very dictator-driven countries like China. Underdeveloped countries. Underdeveloped, mm. perhaps, mm. where there's not so much freedom, where they would have things of that. It also calls into question not only the legitimacy of the Olympics, but other sports as well. Mm. Um, if obviously Olympic athletes can pass tests, doping tests, undetected mm. using these drugs, which other sports are, are doing it? I mean, I think in the 1990s, there was a scandal in baseball in the MLB mm. where it turned out that pretty much the whole league was on steroids and... I don't think that's really changed now. And you look at the UFC as well, who I think just started to get more uh, on. They have spot checks, don't they? I believe. Um, yeah. So I've heard, but I think they can be tested any time. Yeah, I think um, um, it's only just started to come into force because prior to that, I think for the most part, people just kind of went <laughs> and did whatever they did and they yeah. took whatever they took and no one really Got the glory. cared. Um, mm. So... Um, yeah, well, yeah, it, it sounds like it's very widespread. It's, it's well, almost an epidemic, you could say. Um, I mean, bodybuilding is another, well, it's not, I don't know if bodybuilding is an Olympic sport, but it, you, you think bodybuilding and then you think steroids straight yeah. away. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, she was on about the level, level playing field. Do they really have a level playing field if she was all natural? You went in there, even if she was in the gym 
24 seven obviously all your sleep and eating all that kind of stuff mm. but uh you, sh- you probably still wouldn't measure up to the guys like jay cutler or ronnie coleman i mean they're huge they're mm. naturally huge so obviously they have such an advantage mm. um yeah, it's it's just it's unbelievable, really. Yeah, this is the thing, as you say. Um, it doesn't matter how hard some of these guys would train and mm. how strict the diets would be. And this obviously doesn't just apply to bodybuilding, but other uh, quote unquote sports such as track and field events or any other Olympic mm. sports. It, it doesn't matter. You you may be a fantastic athlete, rigorous training and diet. But the other guy who's got a very identical training Regime. plan and diet. Yeah. Oh, by the way, he's also taking steroids. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's just come out on top. Yeah, no uh, question really. Mm. Also, yeah, so it, it calls into question the legitimacy of sport in general, as I've just said. Another thing that sort of brings to mind is so uh, obviously the Russians are obviously cheated um mm. the olympics what else are they up to i mean i think oh, yeah. i think it's i think it's over exaggerated that russia are this, uh, this evil evil superpower yeah. like the soviet union still but mm. it doesn't mean that they're they're uh, acting in the best interests of western countries like britain and mm. the united states for example yeah yeah should we have a look at the trailer yeah, so we're just going to play a short clip of the trailer. I mean, you can check out the full thing on YouTube if you want to, but just give you a bit of an idea. Okay. I was thinking that we'd start, I ask you questions, and you answer yes or no. Were you the mastermind that cheated the Olympics? Yes. Today, the World Anti-Doping Agency suspended Russia's sports drug testing lab. 99% of Russian athletes are guilty of doping. It's worse than we thought. If this is true, it is an unimaginable level of criminality. I was helping to facilitate one of the most elaborate doping ploys in a... Yeah, yeah, so that gives you a bit of an idea. Of, that's, as I say, exclusive on Netflix right now. Um... Obviously, if you knew a bit about this already prior to hearing this or watching the documentary yourselves, you'll know that the Russian team was briefly going to be banned from Rio 20, uh, 2016 Olympics, but I think eventually they were reinstated. Why? Well, this is part of the documentary that you'll find out is there's right. there's a underlying there's sort of. underlying issues there right. lots of connections lots of special interests corruption corruption mm. of course anything like this there's big money involved and where there's money there's usually corruption so yeah and not, you know, not sport or uh, it's any any kind of company yeah, really. <laughs> yeah anything yeah uh, and yeah if you watch it you'll see that um however today we've in the recent news at the time we're recording this there's actually a article that's come out to suggest that uh, Russia is actually going to be banned from next year's Winter Olympics in South Korea. The country's officials are apparently forbidden to attend. Its flag will not be displayed at the open ceremony and its anthem will not sound. Any Russian athletes who receive a special uh, arrangement to participate in the Games will do so as individuals wearing neutral uniforms and any medals that they win will go down just by their name and it will say that Russia won zero medals. When did this this is so this is the New York Times and this came out Yeah, this came out today. Yeah. On December fifth, twenty seventeen. That is crazy. So this is big. This is big. This is big, big documentary that I think you have to see. Um, <laughs> yeah. They, well obviously it's there's some consequences and it sets an example for all the other athletes as well around the world and mm. i mean are we gonna see that well, i don't know america whoever else is in the olympics um i mean are they gonna be tested as well and we're gonna find out that 
uh, they're all doping as well. Are we going to see um, performance drop because everyone's uh, thinking, oh, God, we've got to stop uh, what we're doing because we might mm. get found out and then we'll be the front page of the news. We won't be in the Olympics or at least our athletes will, but we won't be represented as a country. Uh, it's it's yeah, crazy. I mean, we could maybe see coming off the back of this. I mean, certainly this documentary has been big, I think, in – uh, bringing this to the forefront to public attention mm. uh, more so because uh, it's kind of it kind of died down after 2016 and Russia were, were going to be reinstated but then obviously this Netflix documentary come out and yeah I mean we, we could could see more countries come out and find out that they've been participating in state sponsored doping programs um, did the uh, documentary predict this? Did, did this mention any consequences for countries, or is this just? Well, uh, no, I, d I don't want to go into it too much because obviously people want to hear it. it. I don't want to spoil it. For yeah, people, but um, we're kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't do spoilers. <laughs> so um, yeah, well worth checking out. As I say, that's exclusive on Netflix. Mm. Um, How long is it, roughly? It's uh, roughly about an hour and 40 minutes to two hours, I'd say. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, so what other sports do you think? I mean, obviously, besides bodybuilding, besides, well, obviously any Olympic sport, but I, I can't see netball uh, having uh, a doping epidemic in it, really. Well, maybe, but, I mean, would you particularly look at cyclists and think they're taking performance on and drugs? Mm. But obviously that's not the case because... Lance Armstrong obviously admitted to um, having doped for years. He was crucified. Absolutely crucified. He was crucified, yeah. Would you say people are more aware of Lance Armstrong now than before he was doping? So the whole, everyone not in cycling doesn't follow Tour de France, mm. anything like that. Would you say they're more aware of him now than before? Probably, yeah. Because yeah. they made an example of him. It doesn't matter yeah. that pretty much every guy in there the sport was is and was using yeah but he's the example yeah mm. but then again he used himself to be an example in the public eye in his charity and things like that so mm. and he's, he's paid isn't he really <laughs> yeah no, it's, yeah it's difficult to say mm. um so yeah <laughs> I, I was uh, I saw that Dan Bilzerian uh, he, he was doing a bike ride uh, to Las Vegas as a mm. bet and uh, Lance Armstrong asked to get in touch with him actually <laughs> okay. um, and instantly he thought that oh is he going to give me some drugs or something like that mm. to help with this uh, but he was like no it's just, just pure, pure training um, but yeah <laughs> yeah so I hope you guys have a look at the doc well worth looking into I assure you it's well worth your time this has been Real Reviews and more to come soon